All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited about this one here this afternoon because on Sportswire Radio, we get to speak with another champion and another champion whose company has really caught our interest here over the past couple of weeks. That is our friends over at Legendary Backyard Wrestling. They actually have a show right in a little while, maybe right when we're off the air. You're going to go over to their YouTube page, Legendary Backyard Wrestling, and our guest page also on YouTube. Tag him for it, and they've got a huge show here, and the champ's going to preview that, plus talk about his journey, which has led him to multiple championships, being a multiple-time world champion. It has also led him to so many wars with the likes of the Wilster and Chris Aruda, Nate Dogg most recently, j Row plus... Who knows what's store in here for the future for him, but he needs no further introduction. But because he is the champion and it's his first time on Sportswire Radio, he's going to get that famous introduction anyway. So we're done! But further ado here on the Sports Report, Number one, Level Sports Show, the legendary backyard wrestling champion of the world, CJ, the Alpha Show. The champ is here. Yes, sir. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> okay, fair enough. We definitely appreciate that. And obviously, looking forward to this one. It's been kind of one we've been kind of planning here for a while. And obviously, our schedules, I have a little bit of a break in the day. And you're obviously here with us. So we appreciate those opportunities. So obviously, first of all, we got a big show coming up here in a little while. It's going to air actually probably in about a little less than 90 minutes now on the YouTube page, The Legendary Backyard Wrestling. So champ, set the tables for us. And what we can expect from Legendary Backyard Wrestling, episode 39, especially for everybody here on YouTube and elsewhere, set the tables for us, champ. Uh, well, <clears throat> this is a big episode. Um, this is uh, our first show coming off of our most recent uh, uh, pay-per-view show and and also our collab show that we've done with uh, Backyard Wrestling Nexus. And so there's a lot of... Uh, backlash from both of those two big events um we have uh, a newcomer coming on the show with us someone that i have personally selected to join us and he will be right by my side uh some fans have been have seen a little bit from him from the last collab show but as of now you will be fully introduced to him come this show tonight and we have uh, tons of other shows a couple matches for you guys High stakes, high stakes. It's crazy. It's well, crazy. Especially, especially after coming off playtime, playground mayhem, where you certainly uh, showed uh, you were definitely not playing around here and in, in defending and upholding that championship here and against Nate Dog. And I mean, what what's that like wrestling in the rain and almost like in in a park setting and in a playground? I mean, I have to say, I mean, we've had a lot of wrestlers on Sportswire over the past four and a half years, champ. But uh, talk about that experience because you certainly. Uh, beat all the elements really to uh, retain your title. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's great. Um, I mean, you know, every time that you go through all these kinds of different season changes or weather changes, each has their own task or their own struggle, if you will, to how to perform correctly and, and, and so on. Um, and so you just kind of gotta, you gotta get in the feel. Um, what we did when we, went to, when we went to go down to there and we uh, filmed on site, we, um, out of the place we checked it out and then we just kind of just went in we kind of didn't really plan anything we didn't uh check anything out we weren't really fully sure even if (laughs) i was i was like first of all because i'm from new york and i was like well how did they kind of get it where nobody said hey oh what are you doing uh wrestling uh, outside in the park because i know by me i actually live near a park and I would imagine if I were trying to do something like that, I would probably either be arrested or shot. I don't know which one would come first. But, uh, you know, to pull that off and, and be able to have, like, nobody really look around and kind of eavesdrop, I mean, credit to you guys, I suppose. Right. I mean, we've had a few altercations similar to that. Uh, we've actually okay. had the cops called on us a couple times. <laughs> um, but this particular time at Flagler Mayhem, because it was raining, 
there wasn't really too many people walking around the park, <laughs> so we kind of got away with that. But you know, there's still some people walking around, just kind of looking at us and what the hell are they doing? But we just kept going. Well, yeah, yeah. Go. So maybe I guess it was a good thing it actually rained because you wouldn't have had uh, those different people and I guess the peanut gallery saying, hey, what's going on? Here? So maybe it worked out uh, to your advantage. And certainly uh, Nate Dog gave you a run for your money and he had won the Rumble to obviously get the title shot against you. And uh, I have to ask you, because obviously this will be a big part of the show here in a little while, which everybody can see on the Legendary Backyard Wrestling YouTube page. Have we seen the last of you and Nate Dog? I mean, you never really know here. I would like to. I would like to think so because I don't know what more he could do. I really don't. Um, I mean, he's a great talent and he works his ass off. But you know, clearly he gave his all and and he just couldn't get the job done. So he tried. He definitely tried. I mean, he yeah. definitely had his moments there. I think he he was kind of saying, "Well, what's going on?" Is saying to obviously our, our ref, our senior official here in LBYW, you might want to say, Ref Fajito, where's the three count? Where's the three count? And it didn't quite work to his advantage there. So, I mean, he definitely, literally, if he could have threw everything in the kitchen sink against you, he would have did that, but uh, still came up short. But he still has, I guess, a chance to uh, get a crack at you. But I do have some comments. So let me say hello to some people. I want to give it. I want to give a big shout out to my very good friends over at ROEW. ROEW, one of our favorite companies around here. ROEW TV has got a lot of great stuff out there. Another company very similar to LBYW that we love. You're excited for this one. CJ has a lot of heart and potential. Is someone we wish lived closer so we could join us. Yeah, this is a company, by the way, and we have a couple of other companies here with us. I want to give them big shout outs in a second, but this is definitely a company. I think with what you do in the ring, kind of the desire that the company has overall, that I think you guys would work great together. But unfortunately, you're a little bit further away than Michigan. You're in like North Dakota, which is sort of yeah. a little bit further, I guess, left than uh, what would be our friends over at ROEW. But you do actually share uh, somebody in common, which we'll get to later on in a little while. And, and please, everybody, follow our friends over at ROEW. They do a phenomenal job. We will have more ROEW coverage coming up here on Instagram, also on YouTube, ROEW Backyard Wrestling. Please give them a shout-out. Yes, sir. A very good friend from WC Wrestling Championship Entertainment, Skulls the Soul Hunter. So if you ever need a soul hunter from California, Skulls is the guy. Skulls is making his debut July the 8th for WC. Go to WC Heat on YouTube and Facebook and their page as well. We'll have more coverage from later on. Uh, Omen Black, by the way, Omen's my guest Friday night. He'll be in your chair. He's going to be at Rage in the Cage, a big war going on between DKW and IMF. He's going to talk about that. He's also going to talk about defending his championship. We just saw an announcement on the DKW page. Page, dark cryptic wrestling about that so we'll talk with omen probably a little bit after about 10 p.m eastern time so excited to have omen as well here with us uh also somebody you know very well uh which you haven't met him but you know him well that is the anarchist gunshot who says i can't wait to finally make my debut in lbyw and i've seen him on lbyw tv sort of we've seen him with chris aruda kind of go back and forth but I mean, you want to say anything to the anarchist gunshot? Because I have a feeling that he's going to come on Sports Wire as well here in the future. So, anything you want to say here to uh, the anarchist gunshot? Um, one thing I can say is is that uh, if he ever does make it up here, um, you know, we all look forward to it. I know when when um, the Wilster was in charge, he's actually the one who signed him to the contract, and as of this moment. His contract still hasn't expired, so he does have the opportunity to still come up here. So if he does eventually make it up here, that'd be great. Well, we'll certainly uh, definitely have to find out here. We're going to have him on. In fact, I'll have an announcement maybe later on the show on the date that the Anarchist Gunshot here comes on. And speaking of somebody I'm going to get to in a little while is, uh, I guess, your newest accomplice, Mr. Napalm himself. Give Napalm a big shout out. He is here and ready to oh, destroy. Yeah. So you know what? Maybe let's go with that because I'll talk about your journey in a second. I'll talk about some of the more recent title de defenses and where you are right now in LBYW. But Napalm has obviously come in here. He's poised and primed to certainly make a big splash and tell our audience what we might expect from Napalm, especially, I'm sure, on tonight's show and uh, future shows coming up here in LBYW to make sure you remain the LBYW champion. Well, Napalm, I'm very excited for him. Uh, he is someone that I scouted for and I found him. And he is someone extremely dedicated 
to doing this with us. And um, like I said, everyone got a little bit of a taste of what Napalm is to come at uh, BYW and Heart of Glory with his, he got, he captured the 24 seven title. So that was a cool little whatever, but he actually will be on tonight. He has his debut match tonight. Um, and I actually kind of somewhat breaking news. His first opponent will be Ragnarok, who is an LWW original. Yep. So Napalm will be in action tonight. I, of course, will be right there by his side, and you will not want to miss what this man is capable of doing. I'm excited for everyone to meet him. Oh, I know. Amazing. I know what my plans are later this evening that is watching Legendary Backyard Wrestling's newest show, LBYW39. Add that on the bucket list for more shows to watch here on Sportswire. I think, Champ, the running joke is at this point, people ask me, they say, oh, what do you watch these days? What are you watching? And I honestly say, well, I'm watching wrestling. I mean, they say, what do you, what's in your wardrobe? I'm wearing wrestling shirts, and probably LBYW shirt is probably next on, on the bucket list to wear. So, I mean, at this point, my life is literally a walking wrestling match. But uh, I want to give a shout-out, actually, also to speaking of champions, and I can't believe I'm saying he's a champion. He'll be in your chair Thursday night, maybe around 11 p.m. Eastern time. That is Nicholas Crenson. And the Psycho Wolf himself is now the brand-new RCW Rules Champion from WC's Wrestling Championship Entertainment. And Mr. Crenson's going to talk about it. I'm going to have a chance to watch his match later this evening. So we will certainly speak with the champion. He won his first championship in over 17 years. I mean, the last time this guy was a champion, George Bush was president. Uh, the last <laughs> time he, he was president... I believe the World Series champions that year were the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, the Super Bowl champions were the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, this is how far back the last time that this guy was a champion. He's going to talk about it. I almost can't believe it's even happening. We've had this guy on here for on and off for about a year, and we'll talk with the new champion tomorrow night live here in your chair. And Skulls says here uh, might be a future idea for Skulls to come in LBY. So I have to ask you this question. I mean, are you guys accepting talent from different places, different states? I mean, is that something you guys look for actively is to try to find new talent? I know you're not the owner of the company, but do you think LBYW, you know, looks for new talent out there, the biggest and brightest? Um, as far as I know, and at least according to me, um, we accept anyone. If anyone wants to come up here and they want to test their might here in LBOW, go for it, especially, and I actually very much encourage this, if you think you have what it takes, come up here to the frozen tundra in the wintertime and show us what you got. I encourage it. So if anyone ever wants to come up here, I'm all for it. All right. Well, you know what? I definitely uh, would love to see that. And, and I'll get to some more comments here. I definitely have... Some more comments here in a second. I want to thank everybody that's still with us on, on YouTube. But, I mean, I find it fascinating. You guys wrestle in all these elements, right? Now, there are other companies that when the weather turns, let's say, in October, or maybe if you're lucky, late October, that's it. Seasons are done, and you basically can't resume until it hits, I guess, above 50 degrees, which is usually, I guess, depending where you are, maybe April, maybe middle of April. That's where you can safely go out there and wrestle. And I understand it takes a lot to be able to set up a ring and to be able to have a, an event and a show and talent and such and other reasons. But you guys pretty much do it no matter what, especially in North Dakota. Now, I'm in New York, right? And we complain in New York when we get like one inch of snow and it's like 30 degrees. You guys, I mean, you practically, that's like summer for you guys. So for those that are listening and watching, Champ, I mean, how do you guys pull off wrestling in all these elements? We just go ham, man. If, <laughs> if, if we're determined to get even the slightest bit of content out for our fans and even just for our likings, we go for it, man. If there's five feet of snow outside or there's three feet of water outside from, from raining all day long, doesn't matter. We will go out there and we will perform and do what we got to do, do what we do best. Okay. Well, you definitely do that here. And if you are out there on Instagram, please follow our friends over at Legendary Backyard Wrestling at 
ND underscore backyard underscore wrestling. Please support them. Also support our very good friend, the champion himself, CJ underscore Junt 99. Make sure you follow him and make sure you follow all the great things that they are doing here at Legendary Backyard Wrestling. And I do have some more comments here. Nicholas Cranston, who, by the way, we mentioned obviously just before, CJ kind of reminds me of a Wisconsin BYW legend from the 90s slash 2000s, the Messiah of Backyard Wrestling Psycho Rob, and yes, the new Messiah moniker I use as a homage to him. So I guess that, that's a pretty cool for you being compared to uh, backyard wrestlers here. But let me uh, come on here to uh, Mr. Omen Black, another champion, the IMF champion of the world. Please follow our friends over at the IMF at IMF underscore wrestling on Instagram. IMF wrestling 666. We'll have the champion on here in your chair Friday night. Mr. Junt, may I not know a lot about you, but I know of you. But allow me to introduce myself. I am the IMF world heavyweight champion, the leader of the House of Wolves, King of table matches. Omen Black. Now, you've been in some table matches in your own right, obviously, with Mr. Aruda. So, yeah, anything you might want to say to the champion, maybe from one champion to another? Um, all, nothing but respect. Um, I definitely, sometimes I'm, I may not come off as such, but I'm a very humble guy. Um, <laughs> I, I absolutely love um, talking with anyone who's in the backyard scene at all. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. Um, definitely sure. welcoming. So for someone such as yourself, uh, you know, to kind of... He's big, by the way, Omen Black. He's a big man. He's a big, big oh, man. Sure. Yeah, no, just to even acknowledge me is a little bit to give me some sort of uh, introduction is very welcoming, and I appreciate it. And who knows, maybe sometime in the future, our paths could cross. And well, he... He did say, he did say, if you ever come to Iowa, he'd love to be in the room. And you guys would be great opponents with each other. There are some opponents that we see at the moment, like, ah, I don't know. But you and him would certainly make uh, some great uh, partners in the ring. Speaking of their North Dakota snow, I remember watching a Buried Alive match in the snow. Very creative and cold. Yeah, I mean, I could imagine. I mean, my my first thought is like, okay, well, how do your bodies kind of – in fact, I even saw one of the shows, I think Ahito was just in no gloves and just a cutoff referee shirt. I mean – I guess you guys really are that strong. And I had a question earlier from Skulls, which I, I want to make sure I get to. And you guys wrestle on a trampoline. Now, it's not a big deal to me, but there are people out there that obviously wrestle in different circumstances. And and I'm curious on what's that experience like and how do you adjust to that verse, let's say, like some other companies that have rings. ROEW has almost like literally, I mean, ROEW, I want to give them credit for a second. They have oh. a ring that almost looks like I'm watching a ring that was on like Mid South TV or AWA TV way back in the '80s, and you know certainly everybody wrestles in different things. So, what is that experience like for you and everybody else in the company on wrestling on a trampoline? Well, before I get to that, I will just say that um, I know that to a point, trampoline wrestling's um, looked down upon. It's it's not like the you know the what's a good way to, it's not like the best kind of experience to watch for someone. It's not always super entertaining. Cause I mean, sometimes it doesn't look like maybe a move could hurt or whatever. No, but, I think it hurts. I trust me. I think everything hurts out there. I've seen you guys do F fives. Yeah. I've seen you guys do leg drops, yeah. super kicks, claim it hurt. they hurt. Oh yeah. It might not hurt as hard as a, a ring or even on the ground. Um, but it definitely has its own repercussions for sure. Um, I mean, Anytime we do it, it's 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 a lot of work. And even at that, when you're on a trampoline, it's just um, – and for anyone else who's ever wrestled on a trampoline, which is probably most yarders, it's a lot of work um, uh, uh, from just having you – know, like it's, you know, all that weight on the trampoline and you have to move. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a little harder to run or even walk sometimes, much less picking someone up and – doing the maneuver so it could take a lot of breath out of you if you're not good on cardio or whatever and there's a couple guys actually in our in our business who by the end of their match and they could only have a five six minute match on the trampoline they are so out of breath just because from all the hard work that it is to do on a trampoline sure. now i will say this i will say this um i absolutely would love nothing more than to get a ring and maybe sometime in the future that's what could come to lbyw and i would uh, i would be all open for it 
but I just want everyone to know that we're not always on the trampoline from October pretty much until like about April. We're on the ground. We're in well, the snow. Ground, listen, we're like on the ground. Mayhem. You guys yep. are out in a park. Mm-hmm. It's for example. And we, we, we go on, we go on uh, uh, parking lots and, and skate parks and anything, even during the summers too. And it's, man, you, you get scuffed up a lot. A lot of bruises. Uh, some people have been busted open. I will say, actually, as a matter of fact, on tonight's show, and it's not super highlighted, someone someone gets busted open. Well, I mean, I saw you said you uh, had a little bit of uh, blood, I think, in the, uh, was it the last match against Nate Dogg, I think, where you had a little bit of blood, or was it the uh, match with J-Ro, where you actually had a little bit of blood coming out there? So, I mean, yep. I could certainly say that that reminds me of uh, my days as a kid growing up in Brooklyn, New York. We would play football, mm-hmm. like tackle football on cement. Because oh, in yeah. Brooklyn, we didn't have what you guys have, these big backyards and these big, you know, all these, like, you know, atmospheric looking hills it was like okay if you're gonna play you're gonna play the rough kids and you're gonna yeah. have to go out there and you know they're gonna tackle you and they're gonna rip your pants you're gonna come home i never forget one day i'm playing i got these brand new pair of sweatpants on and I'm, i get them and you know we didn't get those too often as a kid growing up and i'm playing these kind of little older kids maybe by one or two years old and i get the ball and all of a sudden i I get tackled to the cement ground and i still remember that cold ground in, in brooklyn and and all of a sudden my pants ripped and it was like i had to go home and it was like oh boy i was gonna i didn't hear the last album so i give you guys credit for wrestling on the ground here and such but i do have some more comments the anarchist says it's taking sorry for long for the delay but uh, he's moving to south dakota so hopefully he'll finally be closer also here some more comments skull says a snowball fight match yeah well have you guys done a snowball fight match i mean have you done actually one of those not not like that but i mean there's been times in the snow where we'll pick up just a, a lot of snow. Um, sometimes there was one person who actually got a whole um, scoop of snow and it was full of ice and someone got, someone got whammed pretty hard. Well, I, I, I could, that I could imagine And Omen black. Let me clarify a comment. I don't necessarily mean partners with you guys. I meant more as like a partner in the ring to have a match. So certainly I just want to clarify. I think that's the, something I said a few minutes ago, more like a, a dance partner, meaning when you guys would go out there in the ring and, and have a great match. That's kind of what uh, I wanted to uh, add there. So if the uh, champ is listening, that was kind of more what we were talking about. In fact, I actually got that line. I was watching uh, not too long ago, the Bret Hart documentary. And he, and he was talking okay. about wrestling and talking about kind of the, the origins of wrestling. That's where I got the line from. So uh, that's t- totally fine there. Um, I have a question for you. Um, would you consider doing more matches on the ground? Always. We're open to anything and everything. Does that give you more flexibility, you think, as a company that you don't limit yourself? Because sometimes there's companies out there and they say, okay, you know what? I'm just going to do this. And that's all I'm going to do. But maybe because you guys are open to either wrestling at different places or maybe doing different things, is that that flexibility kind of open you guys up to more things? Um, I think so. I think because another thing, too, that we do is um, whenever we travel, um, we'll, we'll uh, like some of us will travel as a group. Maybe we'll go on like a trip or something. And during that trip, man, it doesn't matter where we're at. We will wrestle. <laughs> We'll just have some some sort of wrestling going down, and it could be anywhere. <laughs> so I have to ask that: do you, How do you know to pick a spot to to wrestle? Do you, does it like do you just figure it out, or is it like flip of a coin? I mean, what's that like to pick a place to wrestle if you're not you're going to be at the same place each time? Pretty much, if like a lot of times, if you're just kind of out and about, and you happen to pass by somewhere, and you just give it a look, and hey that'd be a great place for blah, blah sometime in the future. And then maybe that sometime in the future comes down and it, and then it's today. And you're like, I know the place to do it. And you'll go down there and you'll just get it going. Well, you know what? That sounds good. That, that sounds like why we like legendary backyard wrestling. And 
Skull says LBYW is like EAW, whereas what Skull started back in California, wrestling at a high school in the bike lot, which I do think is fascinating here. I think it's a fascinating point. But let me come back to Napalm. Napalm will wrestle on the ground, on a roof of a house, wherever. Just keep feeding me. Just keep feeding me. That's a Ryback line. I guess he's going to be maybe our, our Ryback here for a while and, and our friends over here at LBYW. But, I mean, uh, wrestling on the roof of a house, that, that, that might be – do you sure you guys could pull that one off? Roof of a house, especially if you fall. I mean, I would have to say the roof of a house. That might be my limit. Is that a limit for you guys, roof of a house? Actually, I think it's uh, very likely to happen in the future. I'm not even kidding. Okay, well, you know what? Certainly. All right, fair enough here. Uh, and uh, Omen Black here just said that he just wanted to clarify that. So that's totally fine here. No problem at all. We definitely, I'm sure that the uh, champs, one day, maybe they'll see each other in a ring. Who knows? But definitely follow great these great companies. And um, Anarchist has a good one here. By the way, let me break it here. I actually have the Anarchist gunshot here coming on July the 2nd. That'll be around 4 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have the have Mr. Anarchist on. I'll ask him his thoughts about maybe coming here and other places. So that'll be 4 p.m. in your chair right around this time. We'll be speaking with him. Oh, I remember when you guys went on a vacation and you decided to have that thing for the 24-7 title. I thought that was really cool. You know, let's talk about the 24-7 title for a second because the 24-7 title, you have kept this championship alive. You know, for a while, it was the fun title in WWE. And everybody would have it. Every Even rest, non-wrestlers would have it, non-celebrities. But you guys have kind of kept the fire burning here that flame for the 24 7 title so talk about the 24 7 title and in fact i've even seen pro wrestlers win the 24 7 title at lbyw talk about this for those that are listening and watching on sports wire radio um yeah so the 24 7 title for us is a fun and different way that we either can or don't have to fit it in with our main storytelling that we do throughout um, the last few years. What I mean by that is anybody who's not a signed LBOW roster member can go for the title. I mean, much like you've seen in WWE, they had yep. legends going for titles. They had, you know, just random people going for titles. And that's kind of what we do. Our main, you know, members can win the title if they want. They want to go for it. They go for it. But if we have, like, for instance, I'm not even kidding you. I had a grandma of mine win the belt and then my mom beat my grandma and then my sister beat my mom and it's like it's just it's just a fun thing people <laughs> who don't really wrestle can just go for it and it's just a it's just a comedic thing it's you know have a have a little bit of fun take some of the seriousness away and have some fun and that's what we do it for and we keep it going Absolutely. That's why I want everybody to follow Legendary Backyard Wrestling. If you're on YouTube out there, CJ Junk, go up there and, and support his page. Also, ND underscore Backyard underscore Wrestling on Instagram. And I think that in a way, maybe that gives you guys more interest because you guys try to give it to everybody to have a chance to be a part of LBYW. You think that's something by design or what's your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, that's just... Um... That's that's kind of like uh, um, <clears throat> what, what's a good word? I'm trying to think. It's 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 just really just a big possibility. It's like if you enjoy doing that, and then yeah, maybe you know you want some sort of a future with us. We see what you got. We see what you can do, and we can work with it. And okay. Go forward. All right, well, I, I like that here. And Nicholas Crenson, of all people, certainly knows, because I, I am sure he's pinching himself to the fact that he's won his first title in 17 years, a major title. The wrestlers that put the work in to make a title mean something. Let me ask you this question, because this is a great segue in a way, because you started your career 13-0 and at LBYW. You were almost on your way to being a Ryback, a Goldberg. The ultimate warrior. I mean, we were going to have to figure out when is this guy going to lose? And you kind of had almost like a roadblock last year. And, and now you're back as champion. So maybe talk about the experience of you start your career off again, like, like, like lightning in a bottle, house of fire. And then you have a pitfall period where you win more than you lose more than you win. But now you're back on top. So, I mean, talk about that experience and maybe how maybe in a way it made you stronger to where you are right now back on top. Well, it's actually, 
very funny how you mentioned Goldberg because um, that <laughs> somewhat of a parallel that we were going for. Uh, oh. Before I quickly get to that, I, I want to say this. When we okay. first started doing Backyard Wrestling, sure. it was called Backyard Wrestling, BYW. We didn't call it LBOW. I heard um, you say that before, sure. We had no idea just because we weren't really familiar, familiar with it. We were kind of in the dark. We had no idea that there was an entire community still going 110% in this. I thought it had died in the early 2000s, like like some of the more hardcore, uh, crazy backyard wrestling companies that were going back then did. Um, but and, and so when we started, we actually did legit wrestling <laughs> to start it off. And what I mean by that is we didn't script nothing. We didn't plan out how the storytelling would go, we would legitimately get on the trampoline and full on mat wrestle on a trampoline until someone either won or by out. giving out, uh, giving up, tapping out, getting pinned, whatever. And might I add, no one tapped out. We had one guy almost passed out because he wouldn't tap out and we had to stop the match because the ref was like, all right, can't take anymore. But <laughs> it was all real. And so when I started off and I am no, I am no high school wrestler. I'm just putting it out there. But I started off, I think, three or four and at the time, just, just doing that real stuff. And then when we decided, when we found out everyone was still doing everything and we, we wanted to change up how we do it now, we were like, all right, we can take this idea and we can work with it. And so, like I said, it's funny you mentioned Goldberg because I had this idea. Well, I already had one of the four belts. I was undefeated with like a 4-0 and record or whatever. And I was like, I have a great idea. Let's do this. So it, it considered me going on a winning streak, which up up to thirteen and zero. I had every belt in our company. Yeah, four time. belts at the time, right? If I'm not mistaken. And that was around the time Kenny Omega was doing his belt collection. Yeah, he had like, like yeah. seven belts, eight belts. I remember it was yeah. a big deal when uh, yeah. Christian beat him for the uh, Impact title, which was like people were like stunned. So yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Yep. Exactly, and then that and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to do something like that. I wanted to do. Uh, we had a guy who was injured at the time uh pinball aiden and he was he was actually set to come back and i was like well i want to do the job for this kid because you know he could he could make it big and so just before he came back we had something last minute pop up which is what ended up in me losing the first match which i actually wasn't pinned in in the first match which still kept that legitimacy for my streak to kind of still be going in a sense sure um and i lost the world title and then Pinball came back from injury, and then I was like, all right, he wanted to face me for my title rematch. And then he beat me. He beat me, and that was really what set me into the spew of losses that I did. And he went on to win the world title uh, around that time. And, yeah, it was it was a good little payoff. I enjoyed it. And for the beginning of my short career as of the moment, that was probably the best part of my beginning career was kind of doing that. I thought I thought it were great. And we used Goldberg that whole storyline when he was undefeated and then they had him lose. And um, we kind of worked with that to kind of somewhat parallel that into. Well, I, w- I would say one difference, though, before I get to more comments, here, because a lot of people want to want to say hello to you. I would say, though, Goldberg, at least in WCW. Because I actually remember as a kid when he lost at Starcade for the first mm-hmm. time to Kevin Nash, I actually felt Goldberg was never the same in WCW after that. You have the titles. That's the one difference. You learn to deal with that adversity. Whereas Goldberg, it was just he stopped, he started, they tried to turn him heel, they brought him face. They just, it was just, they didn't, he never had that same almost jump start he never quite i think overcame that in terms of losing for the first time whereas you were able to i do have some more comments here i want to give a big shout out to the big cheese logan the cwe uk champion of the world who by the way you have to go to his instagram page at big cheese logan because he just posted a photo 
with a guy you might have heard of named John Cena. And John oh. Cena, obviously, yeah, you might have heard of him, right? John Cena, maybe, maybe. you heard of this guy? Maybe. All right. Maybe. I actually, I just last saw him at Fast X the other day. So I just saw him last month on my big screen. But he says, fact of the day, I legitimately have had two backyard wrestling matches around 2000 and 2001. I have the tapes on a mini DVD, but need a camcorder to play them. So curious how I look on them. Yeah, I'm surprised anybody has anything taped, like for them doing anything from 2000, 2001. So I could only imagine. That'll probably be a conversation, I'm sure, with the Big Cheese that I will have next month on Sports Bar Ready because the Big Cheese is coming back because I have candy to eat on me. I, I have UK candy that I have to eat on air, champ. So I, we have to do it in a couple of weeks. So I have to make sure the champion and I have an appearance. And we also have a big CWE show to promote, which the champion will be in action for. I have some more comments here. Uh, yeah. I will certainly make sure to connect you with Mr. Omen Black. I'll definitely do that um, after we get off the air. We'll, well, I'll definitely send you his Facebook, and we'll go with that. When I have a big shout to another person from the UK, Mr. Michael knows. Michael is always a fixture at the nonstop action wrestling shows. Also, our friends over at Wrestling Appreciation Society. It says, always lovely to tune into Sportswire. It's been a while since I came in. Well, it's also because you're getting used to the fact that I'm not live on Facebook. We have this temporary block, which I have no mm -hmm. idea why. So thank you, and thank you to everybody that is with us on youtube thank you to everybody that has supported me over the years and also i have here uh i love that second place championship got replaced with the interstate title over lbyw so talk about that obviously you held that title and talk about that transition we went from the second place title to the interstate title. i don't also know recently we added tag team titles a couple of months ago as well yeah. uh <laughs> Yes, it's kind of funny. So, um, kind of like what I was saying earlier, when we when we first started, we didn't have an idea of how anything worked uh, <laughs> nowadays. And so, but that's it how it always easy. goes with anything you start up for the first. Host. I'm doing this yeah. four and a half years. I started doing this on a Skype call, so nobody knows oh, sure, what can yeah. happen. So you know, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to start somewhere. So absolutely. But um, yeah, so we just did it for fun, and I mean, we still do it for fun. I don't want to make it seem like it's a chore because it's <laughs> not. But it's a more serious tone now than it was back when we started in 2020. And when okay. we started, we had the world title, um, which is this one, not this design. Um, it was just uh, we had the spinner belt, but um, because in my mind, and I will say this, very, I am in the minority when I say this, the spinner. WWE Championship is the greatest WWE Championship design in his. Ooh, you know, I, I got guys like the Big Cheese in here who go way back to the days yeah, of like yeah. when Hulk Hogan had the title back in, in the <laughs> early 90s. I mean, I have people in here that, you know, go back and I'm going to leave yeah. that alone for now because it's, it's your time, cha champ. Oh. But certainly uh, you definitely have an interesting take there on that for some people. I, I, I respect your opinion, though. Oh, I'm sure I'll get some shit for it. I always do. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, uh, so like I said, we kind of started off not so serious at the time. And so we had the world title and I was like, all right, well, what, what can we do next? And we're like, ha ha, let's make a second place title. Stupid, funny, whatever. Okay. We did it. <laughs> and then it just so happened to stick up until earlier this year. And I don't know why. I think it was just because I didn't want to change the name. Because despite the name, that was at one point the um, second best title in the company to own. <laughs> and it wasn't exactly looked upon as such, but from us here, it was treated as such. Like if you didn't have the world title, that was the title you kind of wanted to go for at the time. And then finally this year, it just came to us and we're like, you know what? It's just it's kind of a different era right now, and let's just let's just change it. And so we retired that belt, and then we brought in the uh, interstate title, and and that one it doesn't carry the lineage of the second place title. But it's just the brand new belt, and the second place is just retired. So that's the new. Um, I don't know if it'd be the secondary title. I think I'd probably give that to the U.S. title right now. That's okay. probably the second best belt to have at the moment, but. Um, yeah, the United States title's only got the one champ right now, and it's it's showtime. 
Well, certainly, listen, that does share something common with our friends over at Wrestling Championship Entertainment because they have an interstate champion, though it's an interstate oh, open weight champion. It's open oh, weight, sure. so that's certainly the one difference here, though. But I do have some more comments. I want to get to people here. I still find the funniest thing that ever happened on LBYW is when CJ and Will broke the trampoline. That still makes me. I think that was in. Was that in uh, bloopers? Uh, let's talk about that for a second. Was that in the uh, bloopers show on backstage? So actually, I think he's a little mixed up. It was actually me and Aruda who broke the ring, and Aruda and Will broke through a fence. So I think he might be just slightly. Um, um, okay, so I I have to ask a follow up with that. Yeah. I mean, so when when somebody goes through a fence, I would imagine does somebody know that the fence is being broke? What happens? What happens there? I mean, there must be an aftermath, right? Because I, I have to imagine that uh, somebody's going to say something, no? Ye- well, it happened. Well, so, okay. So with, with the fence, with the fence that got broke, um, it happened during a match. It happened during a match. And the two guys who happened to go through the match, one of whom was our referee for the match, and the other one was a guy who had – no business being involved in the match whatsoever. But it happened, and shit happens, and we just kept going. Then, after the match was done, yeah, it was notified, and <laughs> it was some shit. It was, it was funny. It, nothing crazy, like, nothing. no one was in serious trouble or nothing, but it was just like, God damn it, and people were, some people were upset, but... You know, we got it fixed up. We got it taken care of, and, and it was all good. No worries. All right. Well, I'm glad it got fixed and and all yeah. patched up here. And also, here are some more comments. Michael Knowles says you're probably right. Used to being on Facebook. Yeah. Unfortunately, Michael, if if you don't know by now, I have a temporary block, which basically means on my laptop I'm not able to access Facebook. So, going forward, you're gonna have to watch our shows on YouTube. And I actually have a big show coming up for our UK fans and wrestlers. Friday night, I have, speaking of a guy who's going for a championship, Paul Mallon. Paul Mallon's going to be squaring off for the new British Wrestling Promotions World Championship there against Tommy Rocker at the end of the month. And we're going to hear from him live Friday night between 8 and 8.30 p.m. British Standard Time. We're going to hear from Paul Mallon. And Paul has got quite a story. Paul is also a fitness coach. He's been a longtime pro wrestler. He's the head coach over at Aspire Wrestling Alliance. He's also the founder of his own company, PB Fitness and Coaching. He helps people when it comes to fitness training and motivations. And he's a guy who's really helped a lot of people. You can follow that, first of all, at PB Fitness and Coaching on Instagram. You can also follow Aspire Wrestling Alliance. You can do that on Instagram as well. You can also check out Paul Mallon on Instagram at Paul Mallon one We're going to see him again for our dear friends over at NBPW. Make sure you follow NBP Wrestling. That is New British Promotions Wrestling. They have a big show coming up here. It's going to be July the 28th and June the 30th. Big shows ahead. And Paul Mallon is going to be out there June the 30th against Tommy Rocker for their championship. We will hear from the champion contender live. Paul Mallon again. That'll be June 30th on Sportswire Radio that he'll be squaring off. And then he'll be here Friday night in this spot. Figure around 8, 8.30 p.m. British Standard Time. Go to NBP Wrestling on Instagram to follow them. Also, New British Promotions Wrestling on Facebook. Check them out, YouTube. I want to thank the promoter and the owner of the company for setting this up again. Paul Mallon, one on Instagram. Follow him. Very excited to have him on Sportswire Radio to speak with him just days before his match for the NBPW title against Tommy Rocker, who took the title away from Martin Kirby. Martin Kirby, Johnny Storm, he was in the ring with. So some big UK legends. Very happy to speak with him here. So Let's get some more comments because people want to speak with you. I love the spinner belt. My personal favorite title the WWE ever had was the Attitude Era Championship. I feel like it tops me. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in the Attitude Era, so I, I am fond of the Attitude Era. Yeah. That title where Stone Cold famously held among others. So, yeah, the Attitude Era is a good Listen, They're all great championships. You know what, what the beauty of wrestling is? Every person that loves wrestling grew up in a different era, a different oh, genre. So it means something else. To a different person, a different take here. Also, Skull says here, Judge Joe Dredd was busted open on Monday after going through a ringside wall. Well, I can see, right? He was busted open by going through a ringside wall. That would make sense, no? Omen oh, yeah. Black says, Spinner Belt is the best. Yep, respect just fell out the window. Like Eric Clapton's kid. Well, yeah, I mean, well, it's funny. I actually, 
Speaking of that song, Tears in Heaven, I was actually listening to that on Sirius XM Radio last week. So the irony. So I guess I told you, I told you, champ, that certainly once you you spoke about the spinner belt being the best yeah. one, yeah. you were going to lose some people. And that you, that's what you certainly did. Omen Black is a big man to lose. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm slightly mistaken. I got things mixed up about Aruda and him on the trampoline. No problem at all. Uh, Michael says, now nah, you're okay. Don't worry about it. I use YouTube a lot. And I mainly use Facebook for sports. But yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, if you're a fan of sports wire for the wrestling stuff, I think you're going to stick with me because I think most people have. I think when I do an American sports show on Friday nights on Facebook, those people, unfortunately, you're going to go out the window. But the wrestling, I appreciate everybody that stuck with me. We have a lot of wrestling coverage ahead. IMF, Omen Black's going to be in the house Friday and I figure around 10 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to have, obviously, Nicholas Crenton, 11 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, Paul Mallon. 8, 8.30 British Standard Time going for the NBPW title. So a lot of coverage at Levi McDaniels in the house. Also, I believe Sunday night to a lot ahead here. Like I said, I love the spinner belt. I love the undisputed belt. I love the Wind Eagle. But the Attitude Era Championship is always going to be my favorite. Yeah, listen. They're, but they're all great titles. I, I think, listen, all the belts, and I'm going to just say because I'm a homer here, I think all the titles are great. It's what you believe. Is yeah. to me in wrestling, there is no right or wrong. Everybody's got an opinion, but that's what makes our sport so great, and that's why we love all the great companies. And I want to give a big shout out to our friends over at Dark Cryptic Wrestling, DKW, because DKW is in a big war with IMF. We're going to be talking a lot about that Friday night, because especially we saw that Mister a uh, big promo was cut there on Mister Omen Black himself and. We're going to talk about that here with, with uh, Darkron himself. And Darkron cut a big promo. And we're going to have DKW coverage coming on two weeks from tomorrow. Getting them ready for their yeah. big show July 1st. So a lot of talk. And Winged Eagle all the way. I figured that here. So um, we'll talk about all that here in a little while more. But, I mean, I want to talk about Chris Aruda for a second. Because Chris sure. Aruda recently was inducted into the Backyard Wrestling Nexus Hall of Fame. This is going to tie into somebody else that just came on to sports wire radio a couple of weeks ago. And, and I'll explain why in a second, but Chris Aruda was an original of LBYW. He meant a lot, obviously to the company. You had some wars with him. He's unfortunately no longer able to compete in the ring, but he was recently inducted into the hall of fame and talk about what it means to LBYW to have Chris Aruda be inducted into the backyard wrestling Nexus hall of fame. Uh, well, it means a lot. Um, like I said, compared to a lot of these other uh, uh, companies that have been going on um, as of now, they've been going for years. Um, most of them, as far as I know, at, at the littlest, have been going for at least five, six years. And, yep. and tons have been going for a lot longer than that. I think TBW is uh, just about seven years ago. On, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's about right. That's crazy. And and in those years, you know, they, they make their own legends and, and such. And it's very respected and in LBYW we're very new um we're only about three years actually next month will be three years old and uh so for someone who is no longer really able to wrestle a full lengthy match anymore and Chris Aruda um for someone to be able to kind of get that you know little bit of publicity and honor to become a, a hall of famer in the nexus is is very awesome um I mean yeah we've had our our rivalries in the past, we've had our back and forths and and such, but he did a lot for us in the little time that we have been uh, a company, especially in the beginning. And he is he's been there since the very beginning, and he's he's had his fair share of accomplishments, and he's done a lot of our firsts that we've had, like our first ladder match or our first tables match, our first battle royal, our first um, tag team match. He's been a part of all of that. And so it's only fitting that he's the first kind of, out of all of us, he's the first one to really go into Hall of Fame. And that's something that I can say um, with the utmost respect. I'm happy for him. And that's great. How does that make the company grow in a sense, knowing that there's somebody that you have on your roster that got into a Hall of Fame. I mean, it's got to help the company and open some further doors. I know Backyard Wrestling Nexus has done that for you guys, but just talk about that before I get to more comments. Um, it, it's just because, like, he gets uh, he gets he gets recognized for his accomplishment, his his accomplishments, and 
once he got put through and he got inducted, and I'm not even kidding, I swear I'm not I'm not exaggerating. Uh, we got what six new subscribers in just the last few days, a couple each day, and like that's that's a nice uh, little grow there for the past two or three days since uh, Heart of Glory has been out and Aruda has been getting. He said he's been getting a few uh, people talking to him about his stuff, and you know it's just it's it's crazy. It really is. It's mind boggling, and, and so it's a good thing for both of us, him sure. for himself and for the company. Oh, absolutely. Listen, anytime you're in something, I don't care if it's in the Mickey Mouse Hall of Fame. I don't care what it is. To say you're a Hall of Famer, it doesn't matter what you do in life. It's going to open up doors and certainly give recognition to everybody involved. And congratulations to Chris Aruda and being inducted into the Backyard Wrestling Nexus Hall of Fame. Certainly, doors are always open here on Sports Why We always want to talk to different people. And a lot of coverage. I'll, I'll, I'll have to try to tune in. I do my best to tune in. And you definitely do a great job, Michael. You've been one of my biggest supporters over the past couple of years, and I can't thank you enough for that. Everybody has a busy life, and I appreciate the fact that you and others follow us on Sports Wire Radio, on Facebook at Sports Wire Radio, YouTube here at Sports Wire Radio, so sportnarium.com slash player. And, and I thank everybody for all the past four and a half years that has supported me and, and continued to give me a forum. So thank you for your support. Skulls will be at West Coast Wrestling Company in Helmet, California. I know the West Coast Wrestling Company because the reason that's important because one of my recent guests is a guy, Vito Fratelli, who wrestled the Major League Wrestling at the time, world champion Alexander Hammerstone, and he has a victory over a guy, TJ Perkins, you might have heard of. TJ Perkins oh, is a no. big guy. Yeah, Vito Fratelli is almost like he's kind of like right there in terms of like he could probably get a call sometime to Orlando. He's, he just wrestled in Mexico, won a title there. He's got like like he's like the Kenny Omega of Mexico, basically. Let me put it that way. So so that's a, it was a big honor to have him on. But uh, want to give a big shout out, big shout out to our friends at Dark Cryptic Wrestling. Please follow them on YouTube. Also, Dark Cron, Matthew Forsaken. Very honored to have had them on Sportswire, and I have a feeling. Those guys are coming back in your chair two weeks from tomorrow. You're right, Tom. Everyone came into wrestling at different times, so we all have it. That's my point. Listen, that's why as a wrestling fan, you got to appreciate what you have in front of you. And everybody that does – to me, wrestling is so different unlike the other sports because wrestling, it's almost like you're in a band almost or it's almost like you have a bond. It's different. Everybody from all around the world can be friends. People yeah. like other sports in different places, they may not connect. But wrestling is a different entity. It's a different ball game, and that's why we love it all here. HFW isn't new, and I'm definitely not new. HFW has been around for 10 years, and I have been around for 10 years. It's crazy when I think about that, and I'm sure we'll definitely talk about that here. We'll be thinking back to those experiences certainly on July the 2nd. I still find it crazy that I've been doing backyard wrestling for 10 years because I'm only 22. Well, I mean, I, I, I certainly uh, can't imagine what it's like uh, here at 12 years old. Uh, I'm not going to lie. This is my first time wrestling, and I'm honored that it's with LBYW. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Too much fun. So let me ask you a question. As we've got another about 15 or 20 minutes with you, I want to make sure everybody safely can go and watch the show here coming up in a little while, so I want to be respectful of your time. But, I mean, you guys have been a part of the Backyard Wrestling Nexus. And in addition to that, you've given a lot of people opportunities for the first time. So I'm going to ask you a two-part question. First part is, what has it meant to you in terms of being with the Backyard Wrestling Nexus and growing the company? And conversely, within the company, giving wrestlers like J-Ro, giving wrestlers like Nate Dog, giving wrestlers like a Napalm. Now, obviously, people know Anthony Arias. People know, obviously, an anarchist gunshot. They know Aruda. But some of these other wrestlers, you've given them that floor to be heard. So in a two-part question, how has it helped you guys to be a part of the Nexus? And on top of that, having these newer talents grow within LBYW? Talk about both those. Well, first things first. Um, so like I said, when we when we first started out, we didn't really think much of it. And it was just a whatever. But then when we really found out that everyone did it, how we found out is through the Nexus. Um, I was just on Instagram. And I had just looked up a bunch of bad guy wrestling stuff because... I just I love wrestling. And, I can uh, see that. I can see that by your uh, just your wall there. You've got pretty much uh, all the belts yeah. I could think of: UFC, AEW, even. So I can see yeah, that for sure. Exactly. And I just found the Nexus, and I and I just kind of went through their stuff, and I liked what they had going on. You know, they're uh, 
and, and, and so I, I found Anthony Aries and I was just talking with him and because he had started the Nexus uh, not too long before we joined. I think it was around, I could be wrong, but around February, March 2021 is when he started the Nexus. And uh, we joined about May. I could be a little off by that. <laughs> about May 2021. Um, and, you know, they just kind of, they help everyone out as much as possible. Um, and everyone and every company is different in their own way and they cool. support how everything goes. Um, it's, it's drama free. So, and it's worry free. So you ain't, you don't have to worry about anything, you know, like if some people don't like the way you do it, no one cares too much. They, they still help you out. And that's what I love about it. Um, and so they've helped us out a lot to get to where we are now and where we are now, we allow people to kind of get in there and to um, start off their careers for the first time, much like Gyro and Napalm and Nate Dog, just to name a few, um, so that if they ever wanted to venture out, they have that experience through us. And we introduce them to the the Nexus ways and, and how we do everything here, and it's just a great concept. and. It's helped us grow. It helps them grow, and and it's just it's it's awesome, man. I mean, I'm even repping the merch here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you know, I do. No, listen, I and and I think that that's certainly why we really want to make sure that everybody supports and follows the Backyard Wrestling Nexus. You can actually do yeah. that on Instagram at the dot backyard dot wrestling dot nexus. Please make sure you follow them also on YouTube at Backyard Wrestling Nexus. Make sure that you go and support company at this night. And I think they'll have a much more longer term run than the actual Nexus had in WWE. Although they had some success, but they didn't quite have that kind of success. Although technically, I guess technically Daniel Bryan was a member of the Nexus for what that's worth. So I mean, but the, sure. the fact of the matter is, make sure you follow our friends over at the Backyard Wrestling Nexus for all the great things that they do. And you know, I think that one of the reasons why it's important. I, I always go back to my own standings and how I've been able to do this for four and a half because a lot of people, you know, do podcasts or they do live streams and, you know, they do a couple and okay, they did it. People watch it. But then afterwards, you have to find a reason to succeed. And the reason that I've succeeded, similar to why I think this next is so beneficial, is that it's about community. It's about getting people that are behind you, getting people working together, supporting everybody as a team effort. We all win when somebody else wins. And I think that's why we're going to see you guys for around time here for a long time here. I, my, my match against Kurt Adams was the very first match that got uploaded to the Nexus. I came into the backyard wrestling scene in 2013. Yes, you would definitely mention that. Thank you, Anarchist, for mentioning that. So I have to ask you then, as we get close to uh, moving into closing thoughts and a few other things. So what are your goals here for the rest of this year coming up? Obviously, I know retaining the title here is one of them, but what are some of your goals here in backyard wrestling? Um, in backyard wrestling, it's just simply putting my heart and soul out for the fans. Um, we just recently hit 1K on YouTube, which isn't, you know, it's not a huge... No, it's a big deal. Crazy. IMF just but, hit a thousand. I think a thousand yeah, is a big right. deal. It's a big it deal hit a thousand yeah. for uh, small companies like that. It's, it's a it's a crazy deal, and everyone behind the scenes here in LBW is just, you know, it's awesome. It's like everyone's shocked, and it's like we worked so hard to get to a thousand, much like everyone else who's done that and exceeded that amount. Um, and so that's just what we're doing. We're just doing this for us, and we're doing this for the fans, and. Um, even even the Nexus, like just just helping them, uh, you know. Sometimes they just need some content to put out. We'll send you a match, man, and put it out there so that the Nexus can keep going and supporting everyone else as well. And um, so that's pretty much the plans, uh, just in a in a um, in a vague sense uh, for the rest of this year for um, LBOW specifically for myself. Um, it's just. Uh, it's just getting these people off my back, man. <laughs> well, you listen. You you certainly have a lot of people that yeah. are, are sniping at you for that championship, and I, I gotta think, going back to when you were the champion back the first time, that this time you gotta know 
that you're going to have to work harder to keep this championship. You're going to have to appreciate it more. No, because you obviously went through those pitfalls last year after you lost the title. So you got to know that the footsteps are coming for you. Right. Yeah. It's that saying when people are like, you have a target on your back, it's the champions always do. I've had a lot of champions on in my career on Sportswire. There isn't a champion that I've had on here that has had no target on their back. You ain't the champion for nothing. Right. It's it's not an easy, um, you know, uh, it's something to not tread lightly on. You know, it's it's a big deal. Even even if it's just for, like, uh, we have a group chat for everyone that's uh, in the LBOW. And... Every once in a while, just for the fun of it, someone will say, watch your fucking back. I'm coming for you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right. You know, and then because like, cause like I'll, I will say this and I don't know how other companies do it. But the way that we film. I don't come up with anything. I mean, I have an idea every here and there, but I don't pick who's going to win when they're going to win. Neither does the general manager or anyone else who's previously run the business. How we do it is we all commune and we talk and figure out just how the right storytelling goes. And then we get it done. We, we plan it from there. So none of us, like, none of us as one person um, uh, 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 plans everything for everyone. We all do it ourselves, and we work very hard to keep it going. And sometimes it's actually, and I'm not kidding you, it's sometimes very hard to plan because maybe someone doesn't agree with the other. And so that's when we all come in, and we all just got to think about what's the right path. That's interesting because there are companies out there that, you know, again, everybody's different, that they may have their storylines kind of conceptually months in advance, whereas you guys – you know, anything can happen. Maybe that adds to the originality and it adds to the creativity of the company here. Also, I want to make sure I mention Skulls. He's trying to build up his followers on YouTube. Give him a sub, Skulls the Soul Hunter. Make sure you support him. Omen Black and Dark Cron are certainly getting ready for their war coming up. Omen Black's going to be here with us Friday night to speak about that. So triple threat match, Prince, Omen Black, Dark Cron for that IMF title. Very excited for Rage in the Cage coming up here this week. Oh. I will tune in. I will tune in. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate the fact that you're going to tune in. I, I hope that we'll have more LBYW coverage. You know, speaking of the Backyard Wrestling Nexus Hall of Fame, on that same show that Mr. Aruda was announced, there was an individual who came on here. You might have heard of. His name is Jack Delta. Jack Delta has obviously been in a lot of companies. He was in a company, and he's in part of a company that actually uh, we had at the very beginning of the show tuning called ROEW, ROEW Backyard Wrestling on Instagram and YouTube. And have you maybe thought about Mr. Delta as one of those names? I mean, Mr. Delta is obviously somebody that's a well-traveled man. He's wrestled everywhere. He's kind of like the Johnny Cash of Backyard Wrestling. He is also a a Nexus Hall of Famer. And uh, Mm -hmm. I have to almost ask you about Jack Delta and even A. Aruda being on the same Hall of Fame bill as Delta and uh, maybe Delta and LBYW sometime. That'd be, a, I think, a great opponent for you. I mean, like I said, um, doors are always open. Uh, anyone who wants to come up here um, and, 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 and take the challenge, whether it be an easy challenge or a very uh, intermediate challenge for them to come up here and deliver their best talent we accept it. We want everyone and everyone to come up. And if Mr. Delta ever decides that he wants to come all the way up north or, you know, west from where he's at, um, <laughs> so be it. Come on over, man. Uh, I'd love to uh, take down one of the greatest backyard wrestling wrestlers of all time. I mean, here's a guy with 200 plus matches, eight different states, probably more states as we speak. I mean, he's literally like the Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. He probably want to come to yeah. North Dakota. He pretty much literally, he'd be one of those guys that says, you know, there's some wrestlers that come on and say, yeah, I'm going to wrestle in this different place and they ain't traveling. Delta's the one guy that he might actually want to travel to right. comes to North Dakota. So right. I, I have no doubt here. And also, they are um, for 
for Dark Crown, we won't disappoint Alpha. No, definitely DKW does not disappoint. IMF doesn't disappoint. And the Alpha CJ Junt definitely doesn't disappoint. I have to say a fun question here. I noticed the uh, Our Lady Queen of Peace uh, theme song that you have you come out to the ring with. And uh, that was a uh, entrance song that uh, somebody used to come out to. I don't know if I should mention his name, but uh, he was a, a big-time wrestler uh, at one time. And he's kind of been scrubbed off... Uh, for certainly uh, maybe valid reasons, uh, WWE TV. And uh, sure. talk about that uh, entrance music you come out to. Um, so, the, oh, let me see. The first yeah. time that I believe I came out to that. God, I hope I'm not wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was um, last year's Haunted Hellfest 2 event, which Haunted Hellfest, for those who don't know, that's our WrestleMania. That's our biggest show. Um, the first year that we did it, 2021 Haunted Hellfest, it was, we had about, and again, for us at the time, it was a little smaller. We had about 15 people in a crowd. We had, our, we filmed our matches, like as if it was an actual show that people went to. They came, they sat down, we started, went through one match, maybe a two minute intermission, went to the next, same, continue, continue. And then last year it was even bigger and we, and we decorate, it's a Halloween themed event. We decorate the whole place. Last year we had about 24, 25 people in the audience. So about 10 more than the year before. Um, and it's the same thing, you know, other than other times when we film, it's usually, uh, you know, we'll film it. And if we have to take a few minute break to discuss sure. one or another, we'll do it. But for Haunted Hellfest, it's an actual event that people come to and they watch it and it just goes and goes and goes. And there's really no pauses. Again, aside from maybe a quick transition to the next one, get everyone ready, and then you go. With that said, last year's Haunted Hellfest 2, if I'm not mistaken, that's when I came out to that song. And it will make sense of why that song was chosen in the near future. That's okay. all I would say. Okay, well, you know what? I want people to uh, figure that out and... Again, ND underscore backyard underscore wrestling. And speaking of things that make people afraid, uh, Michael Myers. I mean, I have to bring up Michael Myers for a second for fun. Talk to me about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, again, that was just kind of a <laughs> that was kind of a last minute thing. Uh, uh, it was the same situation last year on the Hellfest too. Um, our one of our other guys, another original that's been with us, uh, Ragnarok. He had no storyline, really, going into Haunted Hellfest 2. And so we kind of came up with this concept to where, well, we could throw something in there. And um, then we could work with that storyline for a little bit towards the future. Um, and so we had this, this deal where he would go to the ring and then he would, you know, a surprise opponent would come out. And, you know, it was Halloween, so of course, why not? Or, I'm sorry, it was technically the day before Halloween. So, of course, why not bring out the man who literally kills on a movie of the same name? Michael Myers comes walking out, breaks his freaking neck, pins him in like 18 seconds, and then everyone's shocked and, and stunned, including Ragnarok. And then, you know... It just kind of, a storyline grew out of that. Ragnarok had a broken neck. He wore a neck brace for the last six, seven months. And Michael Myers would occasionally come in and stalk him. And then, um, you know, sure enough, they, they fought again at uh, the last pay-per-view. <laughs> that reminds me of a couple of things. The uh, Kane, Pete Rose, WrestleMania, then for a while, uh, Paul Bear, I think, when he was sort of aligned with Edge, I think, at the time, was it? Yeah, it was with Edge and uh, edging the whole Edge and Kane thing back in the uh, sort of, I guess, the end of the uh, Ruthless Aggression era. So, yeah, those are some uh, interesting yeah. points here. Michael Knoll says, backyard wrestling, I might want to travel. Who knows, maybe one day I'll turn up from England. Hey, you never know. England to North Dakota. Listen, you're getting new people out there, and that's what we want to do, bring people together. Skulls is talking about taking uh, – 
autographs. I think Skulls, let's get the YouTube followers first before we charge people for autographs. You know, we love you on Sportswire, but uh, let's uh, let's get those followers here first, and and obviously we'll see. And I can see, I definitely see from your Instagram page that you're a huge horror fan. So I could definitely definitely see. Yeah. And you know a little bit of pain and misery because unfortunately you're a Cowboys fan. So the Cowboys, <laughs> unfortunately, you know they haven't had that that much success in the postseason. But maybe they'll get it right this year. I won't ask you too much on that. But before I get to closing thoughts here, I wanted to ask you one of my, one of my two last questions, which is the first one is, what do you want to say to any of your future opponents coming up in the ring? Um, I welcome all the challenges in the world. And I mean that quite literally, especially Sir Michael Knowles. If he ever wants to come up from England, bring it. I welcome any and all competitors. And I would absolutely love and have the honor to work with anyone that decides that they want to take some dedication and travel to a very um, not very well known state. So, yeah, I, 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 it is one of the lesser known states mm -hmm. in the United States. I believe it's the fourth least popular state. But I would say, yes. if if you're a sports fan, there's actually a pretty big name that that's actually a part of North Dakota. Roger Maris. I'm sure people have heard yeah. of Roger Maris for American fans. He had held for a long time, and some yeah. people had felt for a long time, and, and still to this day, up until Aaron Judge recently of the New York Yankees had held the major league record for home runs in a single season and was a two-time MVP. So Roger Maris is from North yep. Dakota, and and Josh Dumel is from North Dakota. And Josh, yep. people know Josh Dumel. I'm sure you get that one a lot. So there are yeah. some there are some notable people from North Dakota. Let's certainly not slag on the state. As I always say on Sportswire, we never want to slag anybody from where they're from because right. I'm from New York, right? Everybody wants to knock New oh. York, right? So what So what am I to say? So at the end of the day, there's a lot of beautiful things about North Dakota. It's a wonderful place to fish, by the way. It's a wonderful yeah. place for the outdoors. A lot of outdoor games here. A lot of people from North Dakota that do a lot of great things. This is a company that's one of those things here. And he also wants to mention, send Kyle Kennedy when he's clear to wrestle. Well, Kyle Kennedy is a guy we call Mr. Sportswire for our UK fans. And he's okay. injured. He got injured in a match here a couple of months ago. And uh, he he's not he's out for at least 9 to 12 months, may have to retire. Oh, so he's saying, yeah, he's saying that he wants him to come up here and wrestle. But uh, the anarchist gunshot says, I'm from Indiana. Yeah, but Indiana people know Indiana because they know Indiana for basketball. You know, from high school basketball, college basketball, they know Hoosiers. North Dakota is a state that you have to think about for a lot of people when it comes to notable personalities in North Dakota. So that's why like, I wanted to at least give North Dakota that kind of rub, that kind of respect in terms of like what North Dakota has to offer. Because again, you think about North Dakota geographically, you know, it's near Canada, it's near Minnesota, yeah. but you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they don't may not know, you know, who's from North Dakota. Also another big name, if you're a sports fan, Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson yeah. is considered to be like the greatest coach greatest. in sports history. Yeah. And he's from North Dakota. So there's yeah. a lot of great people here from uh, North Dakota. I want to make sure that those people get also a mention. Also, Carson Wentz. Well, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, he went to the Eagles, but yes. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a conversation for a whole nother time. Um, we we going to say something else? Go ahead. Um, actually, I don't know if any people know this, but Wiz Khalifa was born in Minot, North Dakota. You know, I did not necessarily know that. I didn't know that he was from North Dakota. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't. Okay, and and then did, Ronda Rousey also went to school in North Dakota too. Well, Ronda Rousey, I heard her, but I don't know if I associated her necessarily with North no. Dakota because she she moved right. away until she was. Right. I was thinking of the people that were like born and bred North right. Dakota. Yes. Phil Jackson. I no. mean, I knew Roger Maris was from North Dakota because I'm I'm a sports fan. You no. know, I, Phil Jackson. I knew. You know, no. Josh Dumel. No. I knew a little bit, and also I actually tried out years ago for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So there's a lot of these things that come up oh, like right. second right. second nature. So I want to give a shout out to somebody also too. In from the from the UK. Also, he was our Big Daddy Battle Mo Memorial winner from Firestar Pro Wrestling. Mr. BMD is coming at the end of the show because Legendary Backyard Wrestling has a show coming up here.
in a few minutes to premiere, and I want to let people go out there and watch it. Evening, gents. Evening, BMD. BMD is going to come back on to Sportswire later in the month of July. Unfortunately, these next two weeks, I'm booked, BMD, but the following week, we could definitely do something here. And Anarchy says, we have the greatest football team of all time now over here in Indiana, the Indianapolis Colts. You really want us? Listen, and I'm going to be objective as I can. The Indianapolis Colts, I wouldn't necessarily say, are the greatest NFL team of all time. They've had success, success, but I wouldn't necessarily say that here. <laughs> but uh, Napalm wants Kyle Kennedy to face CJ. Na- Napalm. Uh, we'll have to see. Kyle Kennedy, different topic for a different time here. <laughs> now, maybe if I trained and became a wrestler, I would take that challenge until that now. Yeah, so Michael knows is not trained to be a wrestler. But you know what? What do you want? Well, last question, though. What do you want to say to anybody that's hearing about you guys for the first time? why we should check out Legendary Backyard Wrestling, you as well in the ring, and to those that have continued to support you guys over the past nearly three years, what do you want to say to those two groups? To anyone who hasn't seen any of our content um, but is open-minded, I say you should check us out because we're not held to any standards. We're still a young company. We still have a lot of people that... um, don't really know the business too well and that are just starting off themselves and uh we're not held to high standards here so you'll see almost just about literally anything and i and i mean that literally anything so you could be very well um uh uh, surprised almost every other month when you watch our content and and i and i really mean that um for the people who have supported us the last three years just me coming from me myself, I couldn't be so much more thankful. Um, it's an honor to do this, to have fun and just be able to do this for one reason, but to be able to do it for another reason while having fans who literally watch your stuff and, you know, enjoy, enjoy what you're doing is, it's just awesome. It's something that I've always thought about even before this. And, you know, the fact that there are even just a few of those out there, it's just a very um, overwhelming thing, and in a good way. It's 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 you know. Don't don't cry on us. You're the champion. Listen, don't uh, you know? Don't break down on us. But uh, you know, obviously, we want everybody to follow you guys on YouTube and over a thousand subscribers. Congratulations. Instagram was certainly building up that following. And a couple yes. of more comments here before I get to closing thoughts. Too many CJs in this vicinity because CJ Black is a part of ROBW Backyard Wrestling. He's yeah. the good guy. You're the alpha. So in a way, the alpha and the good guy, it's mm-hmm. almost like maybe like two forces collide almost in a way. So you know, maybe one day CJ and CJ square off. Who knows? I'm not going to pick who'd be the better man. I'll certainly let the uh, audience and certainly uh, you guys figure that out in the ring. But obviously, CJ Black has been on here on Sportswire in the past. I am sure he'll be back on very soon. He'll talk a lot about what he's doing at ROEW. You'll be on here soon to talk about what you're going to do in Legendary Backyard Wrestling and two great companies, two great wrestlers. Very excited about that. I I hope to share the – I hope to share uh, a match with this guy. Yes, he's great, great wrestler, by the way. He's a great wrestler. Very, he might be, he might, good. he might actually be a good guy, but I actually think he's an even better guy in the ring. So I actually oh, yeah. think that he's even better in the ring. So th- this yeah. guy, CJ Black, you want to watch him, his company, ROEW Backyard Wrestling. So make sure you support him. And CJ says, he, you mirror Jason Storm, the company's champion, in a way. He might have to mess you up, but we'll figure that out down the road here. But I want to give you the floor. I want to give you some closing thoughts. Obviously, we're coming up to showtime here, and I want everybody to go out there and watch the show. I'm going to watch it later tonight when I'm done with a couple of different things, so I'm looking forward to tuning in. I hope we can have more coverage of the company. Anything we can do to promote you guys, anybody you want us to talk with, happy to do that here as well. So I want to give you the floor, give you some closing thoughts, anything else you want to plug, share, say, and I'm very honored to have had you, hopefully the first of many things here from LBYW, and fire away and be my guest. Well, if you don't know me now, you will know me after this and after the next few shows. I am CJ the Alpha Junt, your legendary backyard wrestling world champion. And you don't want to miss tonight's show, LBW 39, as I will be ringside with my new enforcer, Napal, making his debut tonight. Very first match of the night against an LBYW original Ragnarok. 
And in the main event of tonight, you will see who will face me on our new series that we're starting, LBOW Throwdown, coming this Friday as well. So keep your eyes open and stay tuned in. All right, well, you're adding a whole lot of content for us here to follow, and I want to make sure everybody follows one more time at ND underscore backyard underscore wrestling on Instagram, CJ underscore junt 99 on Instagram. Also, give him a friend request on Facebook. It's uh, Charles CJ Junt Sr. He's already a senior, a young man. A young man's a senior already, so certainly uh, that's, a, that's a pretty cool feat. Congratulations to you on that. Also, Thank you. CJ Junt on YouTube as well for the Legendary Backyard Wrestling content where you can watch Legendary Backyard Wrestling backstage shows, throwdown shows. They have pretty much 24-7 mode of content. I cannot wait to watch the show here later tonight. Omen Black, would love to have you in IMF. I will definitely send you his personal info when we're off the air, and I look forward to that. And um, Champ, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Congratulations on all the success you've had personally in the ring, along with the rest of Legendary Backyard Wrestling. I look forward to watching the show here later today. I look forward to watching more content from you guys in the future, having you on with the rest of the roster. And Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, looking forward to the show one more time. And Definitely, uh, you've shown why you're an alpha, and uh, we definitely, I hope, to talk with you very soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, that was here. Our guest, the legendary backyard wrestling champion of the world, CJ the Alpha Junt, who has recently successfully defended his championship at Playground Mayhem against Nate Dogg. He'll be ringside at today's LBYW 39 show with his newest accomplice, that is Napalm. You can follow, again, legendary backyard wrestling at ND underscore backyard underscore wrestling. Also, CJ underscore Junt 99, both on Instagram, CJ Junt on YouTube for LBYW shows. My name, again, is the Reverend Tom Bryce. I'll be back here in this chair tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time with the WC brand new RCW Underground Champion of the World, Nicholas Crenson, the new Messiah himself. He will be here to talk about his championship first one in nearly 17 years. Friday again, 8 to 8.30 p.m. British Standard Time, Paul Mallins from NBPW ahead of his match against Tommy Rocker for the NPBW title. Also, Omen Black and more from I. MF, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, all on Sportswire Radio's channels. Thank you, everybody, here for tuning in. Go to CJ Junt's YouTube page. Go and watch the next LBYW 39 show here on the number one global radio station that is Sportswire Radio. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you, everybody, here for tuning in. <laughs>